Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about a very important lab marker, which is often missed in routine blood work. And this lab marker is called homocysteine, and it's important for B vitamin deficiencies. It's an indicator of a B vitamin deficiency or issues with genetics. So let's go right into it. Homocysteine, the forgotten lab marker for B vitamin deficiency. Homocysteine is an amino acid which occurs in the body as an intermediate between methionine and cysteine. So what is methionine? Methionine is an essential amino acid and is sulfur rich. Cysteine is needed to make glutathione. So you take methionine, which is an essential amino acid, and it has to go from methionine to cysteine, and the intermediary is homocysteine. So you need B vitamins to convert this from methionine down to homocysteine down to cysteine. And cysteine is so important for the production of glutathione. And as you know, glutathione is a very potent antioxidant and it's also involved in detoxification. So it's a very crucial amino acid that we need. B vitamins, which we want is folate, B, B6, B12, right? Because that is involved in the breakdown of homocysteine to cysteine. Why is homocysteine such an important marker? Because if you have elevated levels of homocysteine, increases the risk of heart attacks, stroke, blood clots, damage endothelial cells of the blood vessels. So it creates uh, damage to the arterial linings and it increases your risk for cardiovascular disease. Also, when you lack B vitamins, you're gonna experience nervous uh, system uh, symptoms, right? So th things like fatigue or numbness and tingling. There's an increased inflammation. There's low glutathione associated with this. Issues with detoxification, stress, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which is an MTHA4 genetic defect. Now there's var varieties of this. About 30 to 50% of the population actually has this genetic defect, and maybe 10 to 20% are more of the severe form, right? So when you look at it, there's something called homozygous, when you have two sets of uh, the same genes, or heterozygous, when you have one set. Essentially, MTHFR is very, very common in the population, but why do some people have uh, issues with B vitamins or homocysteine when other people do not? And that's usually due to environmental food intake, um, quality of life, and so forth, right? So when we look at homocysteine, the lab marker we're looking for is actually called homocysteine. And usually they range from zero up to like 15. I've never seen anybody with zero. Um, but I've seen people above 15 uh, easily. And what you want to do is shoot for is ideally just around seven uh, on the lab markers, okay? So some of the symptoms related to high homocysteine is pale skin, because if you lack B12, sometimes you can create an anemia. So you can have pale skin, obviously fatigue, weakness in the muscles, twitching of the eyelids, Depression can be associated with it. Numbness and tingling, okay? A classic example is a alcoholic, someone who drinks a lot of alcohol because they're not eating food for calories sometimes. They'll deplete their B12, and B6, and B9, and they will develop numbness and tingling, and they'll have balance disorders because it affects, the alcohol affects the cerebellum. But B vitamins are also necessary for uh, central nervous and peripheral nervous system. Uh, function. So numbness and tingling is one of those things. Diet, what you want to do is increase cruciferous vegetables, spinach, kale, lentils, etc. Let's get to the important part, supplementation. What we need is methyl donors, right? You need to methylate in order to convert. So uh, when we look at supplementation, we don't just look at um, folate, B6, and B12. One, we want the proper forms of those uh, nutrients, 
because folic acid really is junk. You don't want to have folic acid. So if you look at your multivitamin and instead of folate uh, or some other form of B9 and has folic acid, really it's, it's junk. Just throw it out. Okay. Supplements. You need choline, trimethylglycine, SAMe, vitamin C and E, riboflavin, B6 in the form of P5P. You need folate and some genetic defect people will need L5-methyl trans, transdrofolate. B12 is methylcobalamin, right? magnesium, and MSM. These are all different cofactors for B6, B9, and B12. Um, but, like I said, you need certain forms of it. Now, when you get, look into genetics of this, of the methyl, uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase issue, there, it's much more complicated. Uh, that you can probably do like, you know, a, a whole month lecture just on genetic defects. So if you're interested in that, I would suggest looking up Ben Lynch. Uh, he do, did a lot of work on methylation and he has a book called Dirty Genes, uh, looking at different uh, genetic defects that can create issue with methylation, okay? So in a nutshell, what you need to do is check your homocysteine on your lab because you need to figure out if you have issues with B12, B6, B9. Uh, oftentimes, like the serum B12, uh, is really not a true indication of uh, uh, need or in, uh, indication of um, uh, having too much. So you need to check homocysteine and you need to check things like uh, uh, methylmalonic acid in order to see if you have B12 deficiencies. But in a nutshell, diet is very important. But supplementation is also very important, especially if you have elevated levels of homocysteine above, let's say, 10. Uh, anything above 10, uh, I'm worried about that patient, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.